I took French in college, not the language, the fries. Thanks for stopping by. My name's Steve Thomas, and I love fries and a good murder mystery. The second book in my series is called Rabbits Never Die, and I think it's a pretty damn good mystery. I took everything I knew about the story in the first book and flipped it upside down, turned it backwards with a side of fries on top. And ketchup. They say fries are bad for you, that fries can kill you. Well, without giving too much away, I can tell you it wasn't the fries doing the killing and rabbits never die. You know who has the best fries? McDonald's. But you've got to get them right out of the fryer, fresh and hot. You let those babies sit for 10 minutes and they're toast. Toast is also good, especially wheat bread with grape jelly on them. But I digest. Let's get back to killing people. A great murder mystery is one where you never see it coming. But it has to be a character that's in the book, not one just thrown in at the last minute. That's some bullshit there. It has to be one of the characters, and it has to hit you like, what the hell? And it can't be fries. Red meat, fried foods, additives and preservatives, cigarettes, alcohol, razor blades, shoe strings, exercise, candles, the sun, Chewing gum, television, cell phones, balloons, algebra, Uber, dating, motorcycles, diet soda, raw eggs, the internet, sidewalks, grizzly bears, plastic straws, the IRS, mowing the lawn, perfect strangers, peppermint, shopping, stress, country music, houseplants, frozen foods, and finally, the Menendez brothers. And that's just the partial list. Take any three of these things in combination, and you've got a hell of a plot for a murder mystery. But what about rabbits? Nope, not on the list. Not one time in the history of mankind has anyone ever been murdered or otherwise killed by a rabbit. Unless you count that scene in Monty Python's Holy Grail. Or poems. No one ever died from reading or writing a poem. Unless you count Edgar Allan Poe. I promised no politics and no news, but I didn't say anything about the weather. Parts of the West Coast will experience lake bursts with gusts of water measuring between 25 and 50 gallons per square inch in less than two seconds, causing the YMCA to offer crash courses in swimming or holding your breath for long periods of time. Snowballs the size of chihuahuas will appear in the northwest region, but will taper off to hamster-sized puffs, then melt before they hit the ground. So basically, it will rain. And parts of the east coast will be hit by a giant turd sandwich, but no one will even notice. The Midwest is expected to experience absolutely no weather whatsoever today. However, a tornado did drop Dorothy's house back in Kansas this afternoon, with her and Toto totally intact. The dog was peeing on her leg and mouthing, there's no place like home. There's no place like home. And finally, rabbits will fall out of the sky at random areas at random times. But don't worry, none of the rabbits will be hurt. Because as we all know, rabbits never die. This is Steve Thomas reporting live for the fake weather. There are several things going on here with Rabbits Never Die at the same time. It's a mystery, a romance, a comedy, and a tragedy. It's set in Hollywood in 1932, but it could happen today. I just picked that date sort of randomly. And the title is a satire on James Bond, but it's more like Humphrey Bogart on speed. So what does this all mean, Rabbits Never Die? To get the whole story, you'd have to read the book. It's a noun, an adverb, and a verb. That's all you need. You just have to put the right ones together. And that, folks, is the mystery. Until next time, folks, subscribe to the show and look up my book, Rabbits Never Die on Amazon. Stop eating fries and stay away from those Menendez brothers. Now, this is Steve Thomas saying grab the rabbit by the throat and shake it. Goodbye. Now,